Hello dearies, it's me, Menopause Barbie, your menopause tailor, helping you tailor all the information to your particular circumstance. The goal of this channel is to give you an education that empowers you to exercise your ability to manage your menopause your way. So here we are at video number 303, and it's part of the unit on all three diseases of estrogen deficiency, heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's disease. And currently we're discussing all your management options in all the categories other than estrogen replacement. And today I'm going to exercise my ability to teach you about exercise options. One of the things I love so much about these YouTube videos is that they enable me to present the material from different perspectives. And these different perspectives can help you zero in on the things that will work best for you. If you have my book, whether you have the first edition or the second edition, all of this material is in the individual chapters on heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's. So this video is, only, is the only place you're going to get this unique perspective. In the individual units on heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's, I gave you separate videos on the precise kind of exercise that suffices for preventing each disease. And what you learned is that you cannot necessarily prevent all three diseases with the same kind of exercise. To utilize exercise as an effective management option, you have to know the specifics about what the exercise must entail for each disease. Here are all the different categories of exercise that we've addressed. Cardiovascular exercise that raises your heart rate, makes you breathe more heavily, makes you sweat, and makes you thirsty for water. Weight-bearing exercise, resistance exercise, balance exercise, flexibility exercise, and core stability exercise. Purely physical exercise, physical and mental exercise requiring focus, and outdoor exercise. It's like a big menu of exercise options. Now the key is to know how these differ and where they overlap. Because the biggest problem for most people is that they do not do a wide variety of different types of exercise. Whether they just don't have time to do different types of exercise, or whether they just don't like different types of exercise, or they don't know how to do different types of exercise, most people only do one or two types of exercise. And since my goal is to ensure the success of your management style, I'm going to explain all the things you need to know about how these different types of exercise can contribute to prevention of the three big diseases of estrogen deficiency. I already delineated the precise types of exercise that suffice for each disease individually in the exercise videos that accompany the individual disease units, so I'm not going to do that again here. Instead, I'm going to do this from the perspective of each different type of exercise and show you how each can or cannot prevent each of these three diseases. And that way you'll easily discover the types of exercise that can give you the most preventive benefits. So let's start with cardiovascular exercise. Now obviously, cardiovascular exercise is beneficial to your heart and arteries, hence the name cardiovascular. So this type of exercise can definitely help you prevent a heart attack. But what about prevention of osteoporosis. The key to answering this question lies in knowing how cardiovascular exercise overlaps with the types of exercise that can help prevent osteoporosis. And the most significant of these is what we call weight-bearing exercise. Now weight-bearing exercise is any exercise that involves supporting your own body weight. And you do support your own body weight with most cardiovascular exercise. But wait, there are glitches. All weight-bearing exercise is not cardiovascular exercise. And all cardiovascular exercise is not weight-bearing. While weight-bearing exercise to decrease your risk of osteoporosis does not have to meet any of the standards of intensity or speed, Cardiovascular exercise for preventing a heart attack 
does. Just standing still is a weight-bearing exercise that will help prevent osteoporosis, but it will not help prevent a heart attack. Heart attack prevention requires you to exercise at your target heart rate for a designated period of time. Weight-bearing exercise does not. Likewise, some cardiovascular exercises are not weight-bearing, such as swimming and skydiving. With those activities, you will increase your heart rate, but you will not be bearing your weight. What about cardiovascular exercise for preventing Alzheimer's? Do you think it works as well for preventing Alzheimer's as it does for preventing a heart attack? You might be surprised to discover that it does. But as with the case with osteoporosis prevention, you do not have to achieve a specific heart rate with cardiovascular exercise in order to prevent Alzheimer's. More leisurely cardiovascular exercise is quite effective. So it is possible to use cardiovascular exercise to prevent all three of these diseases, depending on the particular exercise and how much you raise your heart rate while doing it. But notice, I keep saying prevention. Not once have I uttered the words intervention or fixin'. This is just so, so important. It all goes back to staying in the proper lane. Cardiovascular exercise is extremely beneficial for prevention, but it has limited capabilities in terms of intervention and fixing. It's always good, but do not assume that it alone can completely arrest or reverse any of the three big diseases. And the one for which it can more readily serve the purpose of intervention is heart attack. So here's a summary chart of the effect of cardiovascular exercise on these three diseases. And on the chart, H is for heart attack, O is for osteoporosis, and A is for Alzheimer's. Okay, now let's address weight-bearing exercise. So now we're removing the requirement of exercising at your target heart rate. Some of the activities that are cardiovascular may also be weight-bearing. But with weight-bearing activities, you could be moving very slowly or not at all. So with regard to heart attack, the ability of weight-bearing exercise to help prevent a heart attack will depend on how vigorously you do that weight-bearing exercise. If you don't increase your heart rate and keep it at your target heart rate for the designated period of time for preventing a heart attack, you will not be preventing a heart attack but you will be helping to prevent osteoporosis. You probably do weight-bearing exercises all day long. These are all the things you do in your activities of daily living. Walking, standing, changing positions from sitting to standing, etc., etc. Being a couch potato and lying in bed are not weight-bearing. So if you're extremely sedentary, you may not be doing much in the way of weight-bearing exercise. And how do you think weight-bearing exercise contributes to prevention of Alzheimer's? For this, you have to go back to the principle of all those risk factors for heart attack also being risk factors for Alzheimer's. And just as increasing blood flow to your heart is what decreases your risk for heart attack, increasing blood flow to your brain decreases Alzheimer's. So just as simple weight bearing with no increased heart rate fails in preventing a heart attack, it also fails in preventing Alzheimer's. What this means is that weight bearing exercise that does not increase your heart rate only helps you lower your risk for one of these three diseases. And once again, be sure you limit your expectations to the prevention lane. If you already have osteopenia or osteoporosis and your doctor tells you to do weight-bearing exercise, run. Well, don't run in the little, literal sense. <laughs> I mean, find another doctor. <laughs> but be aware that by then, it's too late for weight-bearing exercise by itself to either arrest your bone loss or replace your bone loss. So here's weight-bearing exercise on our chart. Next, 
is resistance exercise. This includes lifting weights, using the weight machines, and using elastic resi resistance bands. So what do you think? Do you suppose that this kind of exercise can help prevent a heart attack? Let's say you lift heavy weights at a rapid pace, cause your heart rate to increase, sweat, and don't rest between sets. Would that qualify? Actually, it could. However, that is not how most people do resistance exercise. And it's really not the proper way to do resistance exercise. Usually, resistance exercise involves resting between sets so that even if you do increase your heart rate, it's for a very short period of time rather than for the prolonged 20 minutes required for cardiovascular exercise. But what if you attend a circuit class where you move from one exercise to the next, doing each one for about 60 seconds and never resting in between? If you did this vigorously enough to increase your heart rate and the class lasted longer than 20 minutes, it could suffice for preventing a heart attack. And since resistance exercise helps you build muscle, and since muscle burns more calories than fat, you could also help lower your risk of heart attack because of that. So there are instances and circumstances where resistance exercise can prevent a heart attack. But if you do resistance exercise in the usual manner, don't count on it. Now, this is in contrast to your ability to prevent osteoporosis with resistance exercise. Resistance exercise involves using your muscle strength to overcome resistance, and that does prevent bone loss. So resistance exercise is fantastic for preventing osteoporosis. But again, do not extrapolate this to mean that you can stop bone loss or replace bone loss with it. It belongs in the lane of prevention, not in the lanes of intervention or fixing. And how about Alzheimer's? You learned in the Alzheimer's unit that any exercise that is all physical can help prevent Alzheimer's. And you also learned that any exercise that requires focus can help prevent Alzheimer's. Well, resistance exercise qualifies for both of those things. So resistance exercise actually can help you pre prevent Alzheimer's, but don't expect it to arrest it or treat it. Here's our chart again. Moving on to balance exercise. If you ask me, this is the fun stuff. Balance exercise consists of anything that forces, forces you to stay balanced and avoid falling. It has nothing whatsoever to do with your heart rate, speed, weights, or resistance, but it has a lot to do with focus. Usually you have to either concentrate on the actual exercise or stare at one spot. If you get distracted, bam, you'll fall. So do you think balancing exercise can prevent a heart attack? Sorry, it can't. It meets none of the requirements for cardiovascular exercise, so don't rely on it for your heart. But it's wonderful for osteoporosis, and it serves two separate purposes for osteoporosis. It's weight-bearing, which means it helps keep your bones dense, but it's also the most important thing you can do to prevent falls. And while falls are not a cause of osteoporosis, they are certainly a cause of many fractures from osteoporosis. So balance is a big ticket item for preventing both osteoporosis and fractures. How about Alzheimer's? Do you think balancing exercises have any ability to decrease your risk of Alzheimer's? Sure they do. You have to focus when you balance. And one of the most important things you can do to prevent Alzheimer's is to increase your focus. So balancing exercises are wonderful for helping to prevent Alzheimer's. And like all the other types of exercise we've discussed thus far, utilize balance for prevention. Do not expect it to stop your bone loss or replace your lost bone. And don't expect it to stop your brain shrinkage or reverse your Alzheimer's. I think balance is the type of exercise that is most neglected by the, most, 
by the majority of people. So here it is on our chart. Now for you yogis, flexibility exercises. Flexibility exercises consist of any exercise that helps you improve your range of motion. It includes how high you can raise your arms, how far you can spread your legs, how far you can bend over, how much you can twist. Flexibility is not about speed, and it usually does not involve any weights or resistance, but it may or may not involve any balance. In isolation, it consists of slow movements, holding postures, and concentrating on the pose. So now let's assess its ability to prevent our three big diseases. Do you think it can prevent a heart attack? Now this one is kind of tricky. If you aren't familiar with different types of yoga, you might say no. But if you are familiar with different types of yoga, you might say yes. While most flexibility exercises in yoga are not sufficient for preventing a heart attack, there are actually two instances in which it may actually qualify for doing so. One of them is called hot yoga or Bikram yoga. This is when you do yoga in a very hot room, and I mean hot, 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 sauna hot. The room is so hot that you start sweating when you enter the room. And then you perform a designated set of yoga postures in the heat. The postures themselves are not very difficult, but because the room is so hot, your heart rate increases and you sweat like crazy. In fact, you sweat so much that it's difficult to hold on to your body parts in order to perform the postures. If you do hot or Bikram yoga, and you get your heart rate high enough, it can qualify for preventing a heart attack. Another form of yoga that can qualify for preventing a heart attack is called power yoga. Power yoga is where you flow from one posture to another at a very rapid pace. And if the pace is fast enough, you may increase your heart rate enough to constitute cardiovascular exercise and prevent a heart attack. So two forms of yoga constitute flexibility exercise that can prevent a heart attack. Hot Bikram yoga and power yoga. What about osteoporosis? Let's see. Flexibility exercises are weight bearing and they may involve balance. Both of those things can help prevent osteoporosis. Not only that, flexibility exercises can help you prevent falls. So flexibility exercises are great for decreasing your risk of osteoporosis and fractures. And what about flexibility exercises for Alzheimer's prevention? Well, if you go back to the principle that focus decreases Alzheimer's, and you realize that to do flexibility exercise you have to really focus, you see that they can help prevent Alzheimer's. So flexibility exercises can help prevent all three diseases. I'll bet you weren't expecting that, were you? See, this is the power of education. I may have just introduced you to the very thing that saves you from all three diseases. I just love it when a woman discovers that she has more power than she expected. <laughs> so here's our chart again. Now we come to core stability exercise. Core stability is really a combination of balance and flexibility. It's when you can maintain your balance while increasing your range of motion. So it entails tightening your muscles and focusing, and it may or may not include weight bearing or resistance. It can involve either fast or slow movement, and it may or may not increase your heart rate. You can actually make just about any exercise a core stability exercise. So it just depends on the particular exercise and how you do it. For purposes of preventing a heart attack, if you strapped a bunch of weights to your body and climbed stairs without holding on, it would qualify. For prevention of osteoporosis, if you did Pilates, it would qualify. For prevention of Alzheimer's, any activity of any kind that involved core stability and required you to focus would qualify. 
So once again, you see that there is yet another exercise option that covers all the bases. And it's probably one you didn't expect. Maybe you should go sign up for that Pilates class. I think core stability is the most important of all. It affects absolutely everything you do all day long. And if you develop your core, you will be better at everything except falling. So here's our chart. Now we come to what is called all physical exercise. Now, make sure you notice the hyphen between the words all and physical. This is exercise that you can do without thinking at all about the exercise. It's just repetitive movement that requires no mental involvement. This would include any exercise that is fairly effortless for you. Walking on a treadmill at a very slow speed while you stare at nothing. Pedaling on a stationary bike while you're engrossed in a movie. It's just movement for the sake of movement. And the question is, can this type of monotonous exercise prevent any of these diseases? And the answer is yes. Even if you don't have to concentrate, and even if the activity is really easy for you, as long as it raises your heart rate enough, it can prevent a heart attack. Likewise, as long as it's weight-bearing, it can prevent osteoporosis. And as long as it improves blood flow to your brain, it can help prevent Alzheimer's. When you realize this, you see that even a boring exercise can do a lot of good. I would say that most people exercise this way. They just go through the motions because they know they need to. And even though they aren't that thrilled by it, exercise that is purely physical does benefit them greatly. Here's our chart. Okay, now what about exercise that is both physical and mental? There are different ways to make exercise both physical and mental. Simply increasing the intensity of an exercise that's all physical can make it both physical and mental. Haven't you ever noticed that you can stroll along a flat road without giving it any thought, but when that flat road becomes a steep hill, you suddenly have to concentrate to walk up the hill? It's as if your brain and your heart are connected. Whenever your heart has to work harder, your brain notice it, notices it and focuses on it. So an intense cardiovascular exercise that is both physical and mental can definitely help prevent a heart attack. What about preventing osteoporosis? Well, all the balancing, flexibility, and core stability exercises are both physical and mental, and they all qualify as being capable of preventing osteoporosis. And when it comes to Alzheimer's, combining physical with mental exercise is absolutely phenomenal in preventing the disease. In fact, it's one of the very best things you can do. So we have yet another type of exercise that prevents all three diseases. And finally, we have our last category of exercise, outdoor exercise. The key with this one is merely being outdoors. It doesn't matter whether you're walking or swimming, moving quickly or slowly, balancing or whatever. And the question is, can merely being outdoors, even just strolling, serve to prevent these three diseases? Do you think outdoor exercise can prevent a heart attack in and of itself, regardless of how little you move? Nah, nah, wishful thinking. To prevent a heart attack, your outdoor exercise would still have to meet the qualifications of increasing your heart rate to your target heart rate for an extended period of time. Being outdoors is not enough by itself to help prevent a heart attack. How about osteoporosis? What if you float on water outdoors so that you are not bearing your weight? Will that help prevent osteoporosis? And let's say that it's nighttime so that you can't include vitamin D from the sun. No, that won't work either. Just being outdoors does nothing to help prevent osteoporosis with regard to exercise itself. And how about Alzheimer's? Now you're talking. You see, just being outdoors in and of itself, regardless of the activity you do outdoors, is enough to decrease your risk of Alzheimer's. You can lounge, float, or stroll, and it still helps. 
Isn't it interesting? So here's outdoor exercise on the chart. And here's a combination of all the different types of exercise all on the same chart together. Notice that exercise falls very heavily in the realm of prevention. Trying to use it for intervention or fixing can get you in a lot of trouble. And that's why it's so important to adopt good exercise habits early on. Waiting until you already have hardened arteries, osteopenia, or brain shrinkage will be too late. Understanding the lane to which each management option belongs is the most critical thing of all when you choose your management style. It's like a great big exercise menu offering many ways to feed your needs. So exercise your ability to take advantage of it. So this is where I will leave you today. If you need to find management options that will work for you, please, please schedule a consultation. I can help you so much. Even if you think it's too late or you're well past your estrogen window, I can assure you that you have more options than you realize. And it's just so wonderful when a woman who thought she was out of options discovers that she still has many of which she was unaware. So just go to menopausetaylor.me to schedule a consultation for anything at all. I love helping you. And I also love seeing you subscribe. So please do that now. And you'll love following me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. <laughs> Come back next week to learn about your vitamin, mineral, and supplement options for preventing the three big diseases of estrogen deficiency. Bye! <laughs>